Hello and welcome back for another Tuesday Thoughts here uh, with Ford Laboratories. Uh, if you'll remember earlier in the summer I visited with everyone about a sulfur deficiency issue uh, in some corn and versus the irrigated versus the unirrigated portion of the field. Well, uh, as we talked about in that video at the end, we'd go back and grab a water sample in the mid midsummer and look at the sulfur content in that well water. So today I've got our test results in front of me and we're going to go through the test and kind of not only talk about sulfur, but a little bit, uh, a little bit more about the irrigation water quality test that we offer here at the lab. So, starting at the top of the page, we'll go over some basic information like uh, pH, uh, and then calculate an SAR or sodium absorption ratio. That kind of gives a, a good barometer on on the quality of our irrigation water. Uh, we make an est estimation of uh, TDS or total dissolved solids, an ele electrical conductivity and we give a cation and anion balance. So that kind of gives us a, a gauge of how well the lab work did. You know, we should have uh, all the pluses should equal all the minuses on the charges of the different elements in the test. So that's kind of the information to start out. Uh, then we go through the different elements that we'll uh, analyze in the irrigation water quality test. Uh, we give those results in a parts per million. And then there is a second column where we uh, play a theoretical farmer and we say, well, uh, Tom is going to use nine inches of irrigation water this year. So if he did that, how many pounds of nutrients would he actually be putting out there on his field? Um, so since we started with uh, this whole process with sulfur, we'll go ahead and drop down to the sulfur column. Uh, you'll notice we report SO4-S, so we're pound, reporting uh, pounds of sulfur, uh, or parts per million sulfur. Uh, just as if you'd see on a uh, fertilizer label. So we have a reading of 67 parts per million sulfur, which is uh, you know, pretty high when you look at the different waters across the country, but it's actually fairly typical for a lot of waters within uh, the state of Nebraska, especially uh, Kearney County where this sample came from. So then we hop on over to the second column. You see if we did irrigate with nine inches of irrigation water, we would in theory be putting on 134 pounds of sulfur per acre. Uh, so obviously when we see that deficiency of green corn underneath the pivot, yellow corn in the dryland areas, uh, very easy to see why we had that large discrepancy between uh, those plants. Even though the soil test didn't quite show that drastic difference, uh, looking at these results, we would know there would be a lot of residual sulfate, uh, sulfate sulfur in, uh, in that soil where the irrigation had been occurring. Now, just to back up and, and recapture some of the other things in the report, uh, you'll notice that uh, we do have uh, 50 part per million sodium in the water. Uh, now, sodium, of course, we know it's detrimental effects on soil quality, uh, but luckily we have plenty of uh, calcium at 100 and uh, 138 part per million and plenty of magnesium at 18 part per million. Uh, so when we go back up to the top, our adjusted SAR is only at 1.5. And really for good quality irrigation water, we want that below six. Uh, so no issues as far as sodium goes. Uh, the other thing would be is that, uh, I know we are getting uh, a little bit of potassium out of this water at 16 part per million. So we're putting on about 32 pounds of uh, potassium a year. Uh, that's great uh, for the fact that, you know, often we don't have a lot of K fertilizer going on in our field. So we're, we're continuing to keep our uh, potassium fertility high. Uh, you'll notice this well in particular only has 1.5 part per million uh, nitrate dash in. So it's actually a very low nitrogen content irrigation water. Uh, so only maybe three pounds of nitrogen would be going on if we applied the nine inches. So um, this is a, a clean water source from the fact that uh, it, and there's no, no uh, nitrate uh, leaching into this water table. The other thing would be you know, a little bit of chloride. That's always good for uh, grass crops. And then the bicarbonate down at the bottom. So if you want to think about lime as calcium carbonate, well, this bicarbonate, HCO3, would essentially be the negative charge that's attached to the calcium. So in theory, uh, we could then calculate how many pounds of lime we're putting on per year. Um, so that's obviously why we don't get low pH in our irrigation 
uh, in the uh, ground under your ear underneath irrigation is because we're constantly putting out a little bit of a lime rate every year. Uh, so we maintain uh, pHs uh, around seven despite uh, applying quite a bit of nitrogen uh, to those fields. Uh, and then of course there's a little bit of boron in this water just to trace them out. Uh, so maybe if we are pulling off high yielding crops, high yielding corn, high yielding soybeans, uh, paying attention to some boron fertility might be uh, something that that you'd want to look at in the future. So, you know, that was kind of a quick and brief overview of, of this report for our pivot here. But uh, once again, the take home was, yes, there's lots and lots of sulfur in the water. And that is why we do think it's critical, especially as we continue to see lower and lower uh, sulfur in the uh, coming out of the atmosphere that we actually do test our irrigation water. Um, now maybe we can adjust our fertilizer plan to give a little bit of a shot at the start of the season just to make sure that we have good green crops early and knowing that we're going to apply plenty as the pivot is turned on and we start to irrigate later in the year. Um, so once again I hope this uh, you find this helpful this little overview here and as always if you have any more questions uh, don't uh, don't hesitate to give us a call or email us and we'll see what we can do. Uh, but once again thanks for watching and we'll uh, have something for you next week.